the installation consists of two simultaneous films, which are they're separate works, but they play together and they have a, a soundtrack that runs uh, through both of them. It kind of weaves a tale from one film to the other film. And they, it, uh, the films consist of two different physicists' viewpoints about what time is. And um, so one piece is when David Berman, physicist, talks about kind of the idea of the block universe, which is kind of a, the idea that space and time is, consists of a block that we kind of pass through. And so it's shot as a kind of single steady cam shot. So the camera kind of travels through the space in this particular room, this octagon library room and down and outside. And it's kind of one single shot, which I kind of liked because that was what he considered space and time to be, a block. And then the other film represents Faye Dowker's view. And Faye talks about how she thinks that time is discrete, that it's not continuous. It consists of tiny space-time atoms that occur so quickly together, it feels continuous to us. So her piece is a kind of cut-up film. It's kind of a typical, it's a cut-up, non-linear narrative. And I interspersed her section with uh, Seamus Dunbar, who's a stone carver, carving a plaque. He's kind of remaking a plaque that I saw at Queen Mary, Queen Mary University that has uh, the word time tri trot written on it, which is from an old proverb, which means time tries all things, time tries truth, time, time tries faith. And I kind of like the idea of remaking this plaque because I was interested in kind of suggesting a time before the plaque and kind of collating these different ideas about time into one film about time, if you like. So, um, and also because you'll see me in the film taking a photograph of the plaque. And I kind of was thinking a lot about uh, photography and iPhones, you know, our phones that you just, people just take these throwaway snaps and it's very kind of almost disposable kind of culture, or it's about kind of how we distribute them, really. And I wanted to kind of go back to the idea of photograph as a kind of slice of time, a kind of moment, a kind of macro second of time. But I wanted to take that little moment of taking a photograph and just kind of pull it out, so if I could kind of stretch it into yeah. a kind of a moment that carries other moments, if you like. It's a really nice way to think about it. So, yeah. And is, um, is sort of time and physics something you've always been interested in? Yeah, I, I've been interested in time, the nature of time, for a long time. I think, I mean, I, was, I loved art and physics in school. That was my, they were my favourite subjects. And then the Great Divide happens, and I went into art college. And it took me a long time, I think, to get back to physics. And it was actually through working in film that I actually... I mean, film, uh, time is intrinsic to filmmaking. The nature of time, duration, how film cuts up time, how it maps times onto the time of viewing, when your time of recording maps onto the time of viewing. And I kind of, so as I worked more and more in film, I wanted to understand time better. And I went and I approached a physicist and asked him to talk to me about ideas about time. So that was, it was through my interest in time that led me back to physics if you like. Yeah, it's really lovely that you brought your two passions yeah. together yeah. Sort of so um, effortlessly. Yeah. Well, actually, when I heard about the project, I did go, oh, my God, this is like right up. This is so up my street. This yeah. is so, you know, time in physics, time in, and I, time in film. I was like, I was like, this is my little dream project for me. So I have to do it, you know. Yeah, well, the, the sort of images mm -hmm. you've chosen, the whole thing is so cinematic. Like, mm -hmm. the, the things we're seeing now, like, how mm -hmm. did you decide um, what kind of thing to focus on in this video? Well, uh, actually, it was kind of a funny film in that the sound almost came first. I had kind of had the voiceover first, because when I was meeting with Faye and David, and they're both talking to me about their ideas, uh, it's, it's, it's their theoretical physicists. So it was all talking about ideas, conceptualizing ideas about time. And I was completely hooked into what they were talking about. Was, you know, I found it very uh, absorbing. And there was a lot of sublime moments in listening to them talk. And I, so the sound was first. I had this, their voices in my mind before I had a visual, if you like. And then it was when I was researching the history of Queen Mary University itself that I actually came across the Octagon Library. And the... The, there was a, a, in 1882, uh, uh, a man called Walter Besant wrote a novel called All Sorts of Conditions of Man. And he proposed, it was, a, it was a novel, and it was about a rich couple who went to the East End of London and established a, a, a kind of palace of delight, a place for learning and culture. And, and he helped, it was a really popular book, and it helped uh, the people who wanted to actually build a centre of learning in the East End get their funding to do so. And the they opened a people's palace and it was a kind of art centre, come school, come reading room type 
place. And it gradually, that's what became Queen Mary University. So I filmed it in the People's Palace, if you like. The whole film is filmed in that original building. Um, and I could just kind of like the idea of a place being built out of a novel, you know, kind of that a novel suggested a place, and then that became real. And that sort of making concrete an idea, you know, interests me. Yeah, there's obviously a lot of thought that's gone into what you've done. Like, you presented mm. it so effortlessly. Yeah. Well, and then uh, after speaking uh, to you, you know, there's so much mm, that's gone into mm, that. So yeah. what um, drew you in particular to those two scientists' um, approaches? Well, Faye actually was almost one of the first people I spoke to. I spoke to a lot of physicists, and Faye was, I think, the first person I spoke to. And what she talked about actually just struck a real profound chord with me. I just, her ideas about becoming, her ideas, because a lot of her ideas have philosophical implications. So she's approaching them entirely from, as a, as a scientist. So I find it incredibly interesting, this kind of dialogue, if you like, between um, her rigor, her rigorous thinking about something that is almost philosophical. Or, you know, though she's, she's approaching it entirely as a scientist. So, and I, I think what she was talking about had great resonance for me in terms of the divide between art and science, that, you know, these ideas, how do we express these ideas? So, you know, like relativity, Bergson said relativity involved a conception of time that it does not bring out in itself, and it's up to philosophy to construct. So how do we make meaning of the, how do we convey meaning? And she was very interesting about that. So, and then David, when I was actually, when I was talking to David, that the first germs of the film really started to crystallize. And this, he's such an incredible communicator. He's a phenomenal communicator. And it was actually when listening to him talking in the office and the hair is going up in the back of my neck and I went, I have to convey him talking, yeah, and I'm, him, I'm, I'm, him expressing his ideas. You know, that's really what I want to convey. I mean, I always I'm, think I'm very propelled by conversation. I think conversations for me, you know, you can have a conversation with somebody and a year later you can be thinking about that conversation still and some conversations are more special and that you sort of think about them. So I think for Faye and David, they both really had resonance with me. And after a couple of months of still thinking about what they're saying, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to reply. And my reply, if you like, is the film. So that's really kind of how I see what, what I do. That's a really um, unique reply to that. <laughs> now, am I right in thinking you've, you've had a lot of conversations with David before? You've known him for quite a long time. And no, no, we've only met through this project. So oh. we, had a, we had quite a few conversations. And then, yeah, it's a distillation. I mean, I distilled down the conversations that we had. But it's very much kept in the, in the language of how they spoke. I was interested in how, you, how we talk about ideas in conversation, you know, as opposed to a lecture or reading something. It was very much, I wanted to keep that conversational tone that he that we naturally had so it's a distillation of those conversations both Faye and David's voiceover. Well, I really like that you're making um, these concepts so accessible for different mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. and people of different interests mm -hmm. um, and what would you like people to take away from your oh, distillation? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I suppose to question uh, time a little more and to realize that it's not a linear thing that way we, that, that clocks just tick that's got nothing to do with the nature of time, really. So I think, that we, I think that we could radically rethink our conceptions of time. And I think that if we did that, perhaps certain things, we might have some sort of transformations happening. You know, like if you think about it, how we understand history is dependent on our understanding of time. So we kind of think about time in a kind of oversimplistic way, I think. And as I've learned about the nature of time, it's, it just it sort of shifts you a little, your, your understanding of yourself and uh, shifts on that. So I suppose I'd like that a little kind of, people just question a little bit the nature of time.